Good morning and welcome to Wednesday 27th of July. The month flies on and so we get together to spend some time with the Lord as we move through the year. Uh, it's time of holiday uh, now and um, a time for rest, relaxation and recuperation after uh, kind of walking and working our way through the first half of the year. Uh, and to think about what's coming up in the autumn term as we move into September and through to the end of the year, Christmas and all of that. So it's a good time to turn to God and just spend some time in prayer and reflection and listening to his word as well. So let's do that together now. Uh, we're going to start with a prayer, asking God to open our lips so that our mouths can proclaim his praise to move us into worship. And we're going to start that with Psalm 8, which says this. It's usually accompanied by string instruments. Unfortunately, we couldn't get those this morning. Just got me. So um, it says, Lord, our Lord, how majestic your name is. And it fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. You taught children and infants to tell of your strength, silencing your enemies and all who oppose you. When I look at the night sky and I see the work of your fingers and the moon, the stars that you've set in place, what are mere mortals that we should think about them? Human beings that you should care for them. You made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honour. You gave them chain, charge over everything you made, putting all things under their authority. The flocks and the herds and all the wild animals, in the, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea and everything that swims in the ocean currents. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name. It fills the earth. So the night has passed and the day now lies open before us. So let's pray with one heart and one mind. And as we rejoice in the gift of a new day, just pray the light of your presence, God, would set our hearts on fire with love for you today and every day. Amen. So today's Psalm of the day is Psalm 119. It's the longest Psalm in the Bible. It's the longest chapter in the Bible. Um, so it's quite long, uh, but um, we're just going to take a few verses um, from uh, the Psalm towards the end. So Psalm 190, I'm going to start at 153. And it just says, look upon my suffering and rescue me, for I have not forgotten your instructions. Argue my case, take my side, protect my life as you promised. The wicked are far from rescue, for they don't bother with your decrees. Lord, how great is your mercy. Let me be revived by following your regulations. Many persecute and trouble me, yet I have not swerved from your laws. Seeing these traitors makes me sick at heart, because they care nothing for your word. See how I love your commandments, Lord. Give back my life because of your unfailing love. The very essence of your words is truth. All, you, all your just regulations will stand forever. Amen. And there's more. If you want to go and find Psalm 119, there's more just like that. Really heart-searching stuff as David is processing and working out what's going on in his life. And you might relate to some of it. Um, and so to our Bible reading for t this morning, and it's uh, taken from First Samuel 7. And really it tells a story of revival, of um, trial and of God's work through the good times and the bad times, the, the challenging and difficult days. So the men of Kiriath-Jerim the, the, uh, came to the Ark of the Lord and they took it to the hillside home of Abinadab and ordained Eliezer, his son, to be in charge. The ark remained in Kiriath Jirim for a long time, 20 years in all. And during that time, all Israel mourned because it seemed the Lord had abandoned them. And then Samuel said to all the people of Israel, if you want to return to the Lord with all your hearts, get rid of your foreign gods and the images of Ashtoreth and turn your hearts to the Lord and obey him alone. Then he will rescue you from the Philistines. So the Israelites got rid of all their images of Baal 
and Ashtoreth and worshipped only the Lord. Then Samuel told them, gather all the Israelites to Mizpah and I will pray to the Lord for all of you. So they gathered at Mizpah and in a great ceremony, drew water from a well and poured it out before the Lord. They also went without a food all day and confessed that they had sinned against the Lord. And it was at Mizpah that Samuel became Israel's judge. Now, when the Philistine rulers heard that Israel had gathered at Mizpah, they mobilised their army and advanced. The Israelites were badly frightened when they heard about what the Philistines were doing. Don't stop pleading with the Lord, your God, to save us from the Israelites, they begged Samuel. So Samuel took a young lamb and offered it to the Lord as a burnt a whole burnt offering. He pleaded with the Lord to help Israel and the Lord answered him. Just as Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering, the Philistines arrived to attack Israel. But the Lord spoke with a mighty voice of thunder from heaven that day and the Philistines were thrown into such confusion that the Israelites defeated them. The men of Israel chased them from Mizpah all the way and below beth slaughtering them all along the way. Samuel then took a large stone and placed it between the towns of Mizpah and Jeshana, and he named it Ebenezer, which means the stone of help. Or thus far, the Lord has helped us. And he said, up to this point, the Lord has helped us. So the first ends were subdued and didn't invade Israel again for some time. And throughout Samuel's life, the Lord's powerful hand was raised against the Philistines. The Israelite villages near Ekron and Gath that the Philistines had captured were restored back to Israel, along with the rest of the territory that the Philistines had taken. And there was peace between Israel and the Amorites in those days. Samuel continued as Israel's judge for the rest of his life each year. He travelled around, setting up his court first at Bethel, then at Gilgal, and then at Mizpah, judging the people of Israel at each of these places. And then he would return to his home in Ramah, and he would hear cases there too. And Samuel built an altar to the Lord at Ramah. And there we go. Well, it might be thousands of years old, but that sounds like something I could read in the paper today. That story of, um, of, of, of war, of uh, the tide ebbing and flowing in favour of first one nation, then another. Uh, of trying to discern what God's will is in all of it and looking to him for justice. Uh, for those who are oppressed. Crying out for his help. And also the challenge in our daily lives, not when there is, when it feels like everything is at stake, like in a period of full out military war but actually in the everyday the challenge here to get rid of your idols to put the things that distract you to one side and to worship God alone to be focused and full of him and his love and his power and his peace at work in our lives God and God alone and so let's turn to him alone now uh, for he is the one who helps us and so we just pray for today and the things we've got planned for today, God, we just turn them over to you. Ask that you guide and help in everyone we're working with and seeing, spending time with today. We pray for the world and her needs. There are so many and sometimes the way the media uh, sensationalizes sensationalize suffering and brings uh, tragedy to our screens on such a daily basis, incredibly regular. It's quite overwhelming. But God, you are more powerful. And we know also that there is so much good going in the world that never gets anywhere near the media. And Lord, we pray for the church and her life, thinking of all the good that's going on. We just thank you for the community, communities around the country that are reaching out and working with organisations, helping people who are in need, providing food banks, the, you know, the backbone of the food bank movement, uh, the backbone of the debt counselling and debt liberation movement. Uh, helping children who are vulnerable and at risk of dropping out of education, um, sitting with uh, 
elderly, vulnerable, lonely people and bringing them into community, uh, helping families to grow and to prosper. Uh, a mission of flourishing for all of human life. Thank you for the church. And we just pray for social services who have a, a, a government duty to help poor and vulnerable people. We pray for them. We pray for the criminal justice system as it seeks to uphold justice in the midst of a funding shortage. Lord, we pray for the victims and the perpetrators of crime, for justice and for transformation for both victims and for perpetrators. And we pray for the work of aid agencies around the whole world. There is so much good going on that doesn't often get much coverage. There is so much good going on. And we thank you for the communities and the collaborations that are going on between different organisations to bring help to places where there is such lack, such need, and, and people are in crisis. And yet you are mobilising and motivating people and resources to go and help. Thank you, Father. So we just pray for more workers and more resources to help in those places. We pray for those who are living in poverty or under oppression. We pray for release, freedom, and good and right leadership in our country right now, as we, as uh, our conservative members choose the new prime minister. Uh, Lord, we just pray for wisdom in that decision uh, at this time of real massive change for our nation uh, that we would have wise and we would also have um, authentic and uh, leadership with integrity at this time we really could benefit from that amen and so the collect for today um uh, an ancient prayer with uh, modern relevance. Merciful God, you've prepared for those who love you such good things that pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts that love toward you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. And so, a uh, rather familiar prayer that Jesus taught us as a template, a framework for prayer. And so let this be your prayer through today. Father in heaven, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. And so in conclusion, we just pray that his presence would go before you and be behind you and beside you. His presence would be all around you and within you because he is with you. God be with you and keep you from all evil and help you find eternal life in him. Amen.